So, Fairyland. I know. Best title I could come up with for a fantasy cube. <laughs> Maybe I have to get AI to help me in the future. But anyway, you know how we do it. We're gonna take a listen to it, then we'll talk about it on the flip. Okay, so there you have it, Fairyland, um, again, an epic kind of trailer style um, orchestral uh, fantasy cue. So um, we'll start and uh, just kind of get inside this thing a little bit um, and break it down. So um, it's in the key of A minor. Uh, and if we kind of start um, at the intro, I mean, as you hear, um, pr pretty, you know, pretty simple. Uh, you just kind of hear this two note uh, motif uh, with the piano, celeste, and glockenspiel, just a simple. Just that C to A. Um, and then when the, the piano breaks into the theme, but the uh, celeste and the uh, glockenspiel um, continue to hold on to that motif. So again, so you hear that at the top. And then when the piano breaks into the melody, then you hear the viola kind of pick up that same two, mo two note motif, but in reverse. Um, So they're doing the CA, you know, motif, uh, which is the same thing and kind of setting up uh, a later ostinato um, to come. And that's really, um, you know, everything that we have besides like some some booms, um, just kind of for a little, uh, you know, uh, you know, a little weight um, just to kind of help us out um, to kind of 
help us out on the top of our phrases um, or whatever. And then just a long, just a long note in our in our bass. And you see, I don't have any sub bass introduced yet. So just uh, some bass. So really simple. Uh, and the entire point of this, um, again, is to just help us set up uh, what's to come. So just a very simple introduction uh, into the theme. Uh, and the only other thing we have, of course, I said is the Glocken, playing that same two note motif. Uh, and then in support of the, the more weighted drop here, I, I have my ferrum just also hitting. So with those two together, just, just to give us a little um, a little weight on the top of the phrase it's because it's kind of trailer style so that's why we have that there um and that's really it uh quite honestly for the intro uh and then we have a, a very small um interlude um which again is um just a piano kind of on a sing singular note um along with our bass just held note and uh, the viola um, motif. And then we move into the theme. So, um, getting into our theme, uh, of course. So it's carried by the piano, of course, uh, violins one and two. And what I have on my violin, as you see here, um, I'm actually using um, the legato, but I'm also using a light marcato, marcato, I'm sorry, mixed in with it just um, to give me just a little more definition uh, with the strings. Uh, and then I also have a flute and bassoon. So I'll play very quickly for you all of the melodic uh, elements, just so you can hear the color. Um, that uh, I'm trying to create with the melody. All right, so we get our bassoon in there and we get a flute in there as well. So here is our uh, melody. So that's it, and you just heard it in the piano. I mean, I just did, I think it's called a gruppetto or a turn um, in the piano. Uh, excuse me, <clears throat> if we get back uh, to our piano sound, you hear that. Um, so, you know, instead of da 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 da, just a little turn da 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 um, Just a little, you know, different inflection there with the piano. So that's pretty much everything that's carrying our melody. And then, you know, I've talked about in previous um, videos about having a motor or something, you know, some type of ostinato that's pretty consistent um, throughout, but just helps kind of helps us move the piece along. So, of course, I have my um, my viola shorts, also a clarinet and our oboe, along with. Uh, ensemble, a woodwind ensemble patch uh, carrying um, our motor. So here we have. So um, just carry it. And, and the thing is that I, I actually do like um, is I have these this ensemble short and, you know, it sounds pretty decent, actually. So it is the um, Cinewinds. And it's just the ensemble articulation. But just really, it helps. So then when we add like our clarinet and our um, oboe to it, you know, it sounds like a, you know, 
the woodwind section or woodwind choir, if you will. So, so real cool, um, you know, I think, you know, as you know, if you've seen some of my other videos, I do uh, often. So I use Cinewinds and I use um, BBC uh, Pro for my woodwind. So for the clarinet, uh, I am using the Legato Extended. Um, you kind of see the uh, CC11 to CC1, how I work that. In terms of my mic positioning, I am using the close um, at 92% and then the tree mic at 60% uh, for the clarinet. Now the difference is for my oboe is in terms of mic positioning, um, I am using of course the Legato Extended and I talked about that before. It's really cool because instead of it being just a staccato or just a Legato or whatever, you can change the art articulation based upon the velocity. Uh, which is kind of cool. So I, I like to use that a lot. But my mic positioning here, I just used a mix too um, for the oboe. Um, I didn't want it like really, really close or anything like that. And the mix too put it far enough away, um, but it still felt like, you know, it was still part of uh, the ensemble. Um, so yeah, so you have that. The only other thing that we have in there is you heard just a little piccolo um, flourish. I'm just kind of writing through. And of course, if I play the uh, the, the right um, item here. So nothing, again. Just really cool. I mean, nothing, you know, real deep, but it, it's kind of nice, um, you know, when you hear it with everything else. So just a little, you know, little element just to add a, a little more interest uh, to the part. And then the, um, in terms of our harmony, uh, pretty much carried by our trombones, our bass and our sub bass. So our trombones, um, you know. And you see, I'm using pretty open uh, voicings uh, for the trombone. Sometimes I use uh, closed positioning. Uh, in this particular case, um, I just wanted to use um, the, the open, uh, a little more open uh, positioning, um, just to kind of open it up a bit and not have it be really, really dark. Um, and then, um, you know, just again, you know, nothing with our, um, you know, basis. I like the legendary low strings, um, as you may know by now, and it's just the uh, legato. So if we play just that. I just think that is just a great sound. Um, and of course, it's your contrabass and or your double bass and your cello. Um, together, um, but it's just a beautiful blend, a, a beautiful mix. Um, and then I have added with that um, just a little uh, sub bass as well. So that's it. So uh, for the first half of the theme, again, those are the parts and then I'm going to let it play. And then when you hear when the second half of the theme comes in, listen out for the female choir to help support the melody. Uh, glockenspiel in certain parts as well for melodic support. And then the horns um, with the count counter melody. And then I also have the cellos and piano join in on ostinato. So just see if you can identify those things uh, when the second half um, of, of the uh, theme comes up.
Okay, so um, again, you, you hear it, then we get to the second half of that melody again. You have the horn counter. Um, so just a really nice line. I'm using the horn ensemble um, from Center Brass, but uh, just to get you into that counter. So just a really nice counter. Um, the other thing is, is we, we do add the, the female choir um, that, that comes in for melodic support. Hit a little reverb tail on there as well. So for our, our women's choir, um, is we use just the um, the epic Oz um, here, and let me see if you should, if I show you the player. Uh, so it's you know it's East West um, that we're using, and just the women's uh, epic Oz. And I'm using the men's epic Oz as well as Hollywood choirs. Um, but really, I think it's a cool, really cool sounding choir. Um, use it a lot. Um, and I really like the way uh, it sounds. So the only other thing that happens, um, you know, as I said, is besides the counter, is now we have, um, we move the basses to a, a more of a pulse, like a quarter pulse now. So the basses are moving here. And so what we have is, of course, our sub bass. And then I do have the um, Cinematic Studio Strings um, basses. So I have the, the Cinematic Studio String bass uh, on a pizzicato, right? And then I have that with, of course, the, uh, got an auto save happening here, okay? With the legendary low string spiccato. Um, as well. So just have those all blended together. And then, like I said, of course, with the sub bass. Uh, and then the only other thing that happens is, is our drums. So in this first uh, half, um, our drums are just... So nothing, just, you know... And that's it pretty much. But then when we move into the second act, and I'm gonna start it a little ahead because when we have those symbols that start ahead of time, if you don't play it before the beat, of course, it sounds a little weird. So I'll get you into the second half. So it just picks up a little bit. So nothing you hear, I mean, just real basic, you know, right now we're just trying to just build and kind of, you know, increase um, just the movement um, just a little bit as we get into the second half of the theme. Um, and then the only other thing is the piano ostinato comes in. right, along with the uh, celeste. So we play all of the um, ostinatos together. So we have the violin short, I'm sorry, the viola short, and then the, uh, the cellos as well. Uh, shorts they come in and then of course the woodwinds um, that are playing um, that as well and we've got a clarinet and an oboe
So that's everything that's happening under the melody. So that's all of our movement under. And then the only other thing is, you know, we have the piccolo flourish uh, earlier. And now we do add the second clarinet and the oboe um, to join with the uh, piccolo on the flourishes. So when we get um, here, so now when those flourishes come in, So just uh, to help, you know, elevate it just a little bit and uh, give it a little more um, energy. So that's pretty much all of the building. You know, our trombones are still carrying uh, the melody. Um, and that, that kind of takes us through the second half of the theme. So now let's get to the, through the second half of the theme and get into act two. And the whole point about act two, and you'll hear it, is it's just sudden change to conflict. Uh, so we, you know, we set up and we've established, you know, this great feel, hey, you know, fairyland, whatever it is. And now we've introduced some conflict. And if you'll notice, there's also a drastic um, change in the feel in terms of our pulse. So we have a very nice kind of 4-4 four, four feeling uh, pulse. And then all of a sudden, when we get into act two, uh, we get this 12-8 feel, uh, which is really kind of, you hear it uh, in, in your strings, in the string ostinato, and then of course, uh, with the feel of the drums. Um, and the way that we kind of roll into that um, we got a timpani roll, we got a tam-tam swell, and then we got some string and woodwind runs that kind of get us into Act 2. So I'm going to play the second half of Act 1, get us into Act 2 a little bit, and then we'll break that down. Again, so getting us into that, um, like I said, we have this timpani um, roll. Right, that's really kind of helping us, you know, build the intensity. I start a, um, a gong tam tam swell kind of a little further out. I'm going to try to pick it up with the timpani roll just as to not play it all the way out. But uh, the tam tam swell with it, you hear that building. So we get that. So that gets us into there. And then we also have um, these, um, just a string kind of run up and a woodwind run up um, as well that kind of helps us get into that. So now let's get all those elements. This is just getting us into act two. Okay, so you have that there. And then, so what I use uh, for my runs, um, and it's, it's the same for my strings and woodwinds, but I like this colors adaptive runs um it's really really great um so uh let's see here if we're on a string run so you hear that so and, and basically it, it's pretty easy um to set up so you see i just have you you have the number of beats that you want to run for and i just want this particular one um for one beat um and then of course i have it quantized um, here, so we, you know, we got it quantized. 
Uh, so it's locked. I, I do want mine locked. Um, I'm not doing anything with the mic positions. I just keep it on mix. And here you see, I said I want a major scale and I want it to go up. And I don't really, you know, mess with any of the reverbs and things of that nature. I can do that inside. Um, but you have the option here to have major and minor selected up and down selected, right? And then you can control um, your major and minor from your velocity. Like if the way that you hit it, it'll be a major scale or minor scale. Let me uh, see here. So you hit it there. So minor when I hit it softer and major when I hit it harder. So yeah, um, but again, um, I, I prefer just to do it that way. And then you can use CC1 to determine if your scale goes up or down. Um, but Colors Adaptive Runs by Project Sam, uh, really, really cool. Um, you know, it sounds great. I use the same thing um, for my woodwinds um, as well. As you see, I have, you know, flute and piccolo up. And if we pop that open, so same thing there. You just pick, you know, what you want. Um, and there you have it. So same setup. So yeah, pretty cool. Um, so again, that gets us into uh, Act 2. And again, this is conflict. This is the uh, act that's about conflict and, uh, you know, everything was great, but now what's going on? We've, we've run into a situation here. Um, so this is the first time that I introduce um, my low brass. Um, of course, and the horns take over um, the melody. So if you hear the brass all together, just a low brass pedal. And if you hear that, <laughs> That little thing that kind of rubs your ears a little weird um, in my in the trumpet, you'll see what I do is to really try to create uh, some tension. So this final chord here is like a, a A minor nine chord, um, and what I do is I put the nine and you know the three, you know if you will, or the tenth, however you want to say it. But I put those right up against each other, so you have that half step against each other, and then of course. Um, you know, the melody up uh, on the higher trumpet. So when you get that, it just creates a real, uh, a very, very strong sense of, of tension. And if you want to create it, that's a really a good way to kind of create that tension um, is you can you, like use your trumpets like, you know, with minor seconds apart or a second apart. Um, and it'll really give you some good, um, <laughs> some good tension. Um, if you will, sort of chord again, like I said, it's an A minor nine. So the, the uh, first trumpet is playing there. The second trumpet is playing that C. Third trumpet is, is playing that B. So you have that. The trombone is playing the G, which is the seventh of the A minor. So that against this, so you have, you have. So that's that chord there that creates all that tension before we get out of um, the second act. Now, the other thing is, is you hear um, a lot of buildup, of course, in the strings, you know, because now um, they have this ostinato um, that they're playing and pretty much the whole section is playing it uh, besides the basses. So here's the ostinato. <laughs> Right, so we have that going with, if we add the drums or, or just part of the feel part of the drums. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, wrong ones. Where are we at? There we go. And then you know, if you add that brass in there.
And then really the only other things that we need to add, of course, is our timpani um, and our cymbals, um, really our piati, just to, you know, for some additional excitement and then our fair room for the low end. I mean, that just takes us, you know, like, man, what's going on? What's about to happen? You know, are they going to be able to overcome whatever this conflict is? So, again, that is the um, second act. And again, like I said, we moved to a 12-8 feel, you know, which kind of throws us off balance a little bit coming from this nice 4-4 feel. Uh, and then after that, you know, it's back to... Our third act, now we resolve everything and everything is great. And we go back to the third act, uh, which of course now the theme really, really uh, developed um, and so forth. So I'm going to get you kind of coming out of act two into the third act. And then we'll break down the third act and we'll be done. Here we go. So now we are, we are, we're here. Uh, so what we do to really, um, first of all, to set up the um, third act, of course, is the big epic drum interlude. So we have a big sub boom hit um, and then our drums. So, I mean, that that's it. So when we get here, in terms of looking at what I'm doing uh, with the drums, I'll try to open all those up. Um, and you can see, auto save again. Okay, so you can see here, uh, let's open this up a little bit. Uh, right, what's happening um, with the drums. So that that's all of them there. And if we solo that out. So just, um, again, just uh, really trying to hit hard in terms of our um, accents and what we're doing. Um, so our low drums, you see where the accents are hitting. So if we play just that, whoops, let's start here. So ba, 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 it's ba, 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 ba is sort of the accent that we're trying to set up uh, in all of our drums. Uh, and pretty much when we get to that section, I mean, we're just kind of rolling um, just really right along. So this is all of our drums. And that's it. That is just the, the driver uh, for really pushing um, this third act forward. So um, outside of the drums, um, again, now, uh, like I said, the theme is fully developed. So our first and second violins um, are now up an octave uh, on the uh, theme. Right, uh, but we also add the horns uh, to the theme uh, as well. And then let's put our, you know, of course we still have our flute um, in there and who else? I think in our bassoon, our bassoon as well, uh, in there as well on the theme. So um, I think that's everybody uh, that's playing the melody. Now, 
now add the uh, trumpets. And, of course, with the massive uh, choir in there as well, it just, that really makes it epic. You know, you get that choir in there and it's just like, man, it gets really epic. So you see, it just get, really gets epic. Uh, and then one thing to you know try and do is try to, again, always make sure um, the choir initiate actually be over here, but also make sure you know with your choir that you're always kind of giving them some room to breathe. So you see, I don't have everything just totally connected, but they're breathing um, just as if, they are a choir. So, so that's very important to make sure that you're allowing um, not only your choir, but your, your musicians as well to breathe. So always bear that in mind, um, you know, in your writing, um, et cetera. So that's what's happening with the melody. Um, and let's see if we got anything else here. Yeah, so that's everything with the melody. And you hear how, um, how big, um, you know, the melody uh, gets there. And then outside of that, um, what we do is the ostinato now, or that motor is up an octave. So listen, I'm gonna just play the strings for you. So listen to the motor and the melody kind of operating together. The motor is up, you know, an octave and really kind of driving everything uh, as we have the super high strings kind of carrying the uh, melody. So hear them adding, let me take the choir out and let's do this. Take everything, I just want you to hear just the strings. So boom, and then if you add the piano, ostinato in, with that, um, and then of course our, uh, what other, our clarinet and our oboe um, as well, because they're still doing the ostinato, our short, our woodland ensemble comes in later when we get to um, that major uh, four chord or the major six chord, we're in A minor, so here we go. Okay, and let me get the right parts isolated. So we got the oboe short, and we got a clarinet short. Okay, there we go. So there, the you know. I, it just really adds some great um, energy uh, to it. And then the only thing you see I added, and I've talked about this before, is I added the um, the Spitfire Audio Ep Originals Epic Strings. Uh, sometimes they just help me out in terms of getting some additional support uh, in my string, uh, Astonado. Um, I'll use this, uh, and if you hit, hear that, Sounds great. And you see, I just have the room. And then of course my tightness at about 78%, no reverb, because I just use reverb, um, you know, internally or whatever. Um, but it, it's a great sound and it just really helps me out 
you know, in terms of really adding some additional port there, support there uh, to my strings. Um, and then um, when we get, and of course the, the bottom, the bases are, are pulsing, both, both, both doing the quarter pulses, you know, all the way through to help it drive. And then with those drums, you know, it's just really driving along. Now, the only other thing that comes up is when we get to da 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 when we used to get to that E minor, that E sus chord. So now what I'm doing is just a small harmonic uh, change when we get there now. And I'm using a common tonality of the actual, the melodic note. Um, I think it's, let me see. Well, let me go to our piano. So the melody is... So when we get to that B, what I wind up doing is I use common tonality centered around the B um, to just do something interesting harmonically. So, da -da -da. so you remember before it was da -da -da, da -da -da, da -da -da. So now this time I go da 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 da. G dumb B I'm sorry E so G B E and they're all the common tone obviously is the B in all of those chords so something if you're looking for some interesting ways to kind of spice up you know your harmonic movements or whatever that's one you know technique that i mean uh, tons of composers use um it's just finding the common tone um you know and then now here i didn't have the chords but i created the chords from the common tone so you can have common tones and you know build chords or or vice versa or have a tone and just you know then uh build chords around it so um so i'll play that and then the only other thing is I play it again. So, you know, da 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 Then I repeat that, da 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 and take it out. So um, let's listen to this half of the act, uh, or let's listen to act three. Listen out for that harmonic change again. Common tonality is what we're using. That's a G major to a B major to a E major. Is what's happening there, and then it goes back to the the F to the major six chord. So here we go. Okay, so yeah, so you heard um, how we, again, you know, we did that G uh, GBE situation, went back to the F, and then this time, instead of just staying on the F, of course, and this is just, you know, little slight harmonic things, just to change things up, just to make it a little more interesting, just so your ear is like, not like, oh, I heard that, you know, in the first act. It's always good, maybe, if you're introducing a theme again, um, to try and, you know, figure out, okay, you know, what you can do to kind of, you know, switch things up a little bit or um, whatever. So that that's one good way to do it. You can either do it rhythmically, um, but I like doing it harmonically. Typically in my third acts, um, if you, you'll notice a trend, I'm typically saying, okay, what can I do a little differently harmonically to make it a little more interesting? So that's something that I would suggest, you know, maybe you do. And it can be simple things. Um, you know, if, if you're on a, you know, E major chord, you know, maybe you do an A flat minor chord, you know, the next time around or you do a, a C sharp 
uh, minor chord or something like that. You know, there, there are different things that you can do uh, just in terms of moving your root around. Um, as you guys see, um, if we go back to the piece here um, that if, if I point out right here, so instead of staying on that F major chord there, I just move to a D minor chord. So it's just moving the root around is all I'm doing. Uh, so instead of da 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 So again, just very simple, moving the root around um, a little bit just to give it um, a little more interest. Um, so again, you know, we had the we had the introduction, we had Act One, uh, which is our, which was our theme. Then we had Act Two, which was the conflict, and then Act Three is the resolution, and of course the um, the larger theme uh, coming back and what have you. Um, so, you know, at the end of the day, I, I hope you enjoyed the queue. Um, again, it's called Fairyland. Um, whole bunch of fun to write. Um, it's good to be back with another breakdown uh, for you guys. And I'll be back real soon with another one. So as always, um, if you did enjoy it um, and if you got something out of it, please like the, the video to certainly help me out and certainly um, if you want to see more content like this, subscribe to the channel and I'll have some more content uh, for you in the future. So thanks so much for hanging out with me and I hope you got something out of it. And until next time, peace.